Hello, my love bugs, and welcome back to another video in my series, What's in a Name, where we look at the different names of the different insect orders, dissect the Greek or Latin roots, and that helps you identify these insects. Except for today. Today, we have another group that isn't particularly descriptive, but I love it so much because I think it really just shows that science can be a little poetic and a little bit romantic occasionally. So I quite love this order and I quite love its name. Today, we are talking about the praying mantises. Now, this is praying as in like to a deity and not praying as in like praying on a small animal. It is the, the stance that makes them look like they are communicating with the divine. In Spanish, their name is the mantis religiosa, which means the religious mantis. And their order name also talks about that connection to the divine. The order name is Mantodia, and this comes from the Greek idos, which means type, shape of, form of, and the Greek word mantis, which means seer, prophet or soothsayer. So they have the form of a prophet, the form of a soothsayer, the form of a seer. And it's not just this particular order name or just the common name in English or in Spanish. Throughout cultures, throughout time, throughout space, humans have looked at the praying mantis and was like, yeah, it looks, it looks divine. Praying mantises have been associated with the Christian God and are thought to be divine messengers and reminders of the importance of prayer. French folklore says that they would help lost children find their way home. In Greek mythology, mantises were thought to be able to guide lost travelers back home, predict the future, and cure diseases. Outside of Europe, Egyptians depicted what was the bird fly guiding souls through the underworld to meet Anubis. Historians later agree that the bird fly is most likely a praying mantis. And finally, pre-Columbian Nicaraguan people associated mantises with a female deity called Madre Culebra, which is Mother Snake. And she is a powerful female deity and represents female power and female authority. Historians believe that these mantises may have been used in religious rites, perhaps to try and invoke trances and to aid in divination. Throughout this time period, you can see the praying mantis depicted as Madre Culebra on various ceramics. So there's the poetic and romanticized side of the praying mantis and its importance in humans throughout time and space. Let's get into a little bit of the identification. As its name suggests, praying mantis, mantis religiosa, mantoria, the seer, the soothsayer, it is because of the stance that these insects stand in. They have their grabby, catchy legs, and the technical term for that are raptorial forelegs. They hold their raptorial forelegs in front of them, and these legs are positioned pretty close to the head. That is because their prothorax, the first segment of their thorax, is elongated. This is important for the insect because it gives a lot of flexibility to the mantis. If your business end is on the front and you're using it to catch prey, you want it to be as mobile and as flexible as possible. So extending it forward allows you to have like a longer reach and if you're pivoting from essentially like your hips down here, it gives you a lot of flexibility as you move around to be able to move your forelegs in a lot of different directions to be able to give you a maximum reach. They have a triangular head with these big eyes on the side, which I think also helps people relate to them and see them and think of them as seers. They have three ocelli on the top of their head, which are simple light dark receptors. If you look at a mantis in their big compound eyes, you'll often see a little dark spot. This is not a pupil. It is called a pseudo pupil for how it looks. The insect eye does not function like human eyes. They do not have pupils. This is just a reflection of light through the structure of the compound eye. The compound eye is made up of a whole bunch of little tiny hexagonal 
little pieces called omatidia, plural, omatidium, singular, and it's just how light is reflecting out of that combination of structures that make up the eye. Some mantises and many of the bark mantises are flattened top to bottom. This is called dorsoventrally flattened. And mantises have two circe on the back. There's a bunch of insects that have circe on the back end of them, but it's just as the general characteristics of the mantis. Fun fact, mantises and cockroaches are sister taxa, which means that they are very, very closely related. There's a couple clues that help us know that they are so closely related. The first is they both lay an egg case called an uatheca. In mantises, it's kind of like spray foam. So you know that foam that you use for insulation that like puffs up and hardens? Their uatheca to me look very similar to that texture. But cockroaches also lay uatheca, though cockroach uatheca look a little bit different. Secondly, there's a couple internal features that you would never see, but were important for taxonomists to determine that they were closely related. The first is inside the head, there is a little structure, and in both mantises and cockroaches, there's a big hole in the middle of it, and the mantises and the cockroaches both have this. And finally, both the mantises and the cockroaches have what is called a toothed proventriculus. Pretty close to the beginning of the digestive system, like not the mouth part, but you know, closer to the stomach part. There's a little section of the gut called the proventriculus. And in this case, in both mantises and cockroaches, it has teeth all over it. And so it is a tooth proventriculus. This is an internal morphological feature that is unique to both cockroaches and mantises and links them together. Well, my love bugs, I hope that you loved today's video and enjoyed learning not just like the science, how to ID mantises and how they're closely related to cockroaches, but also a little bit more of the human connection we have to these animals. I will see you next time for another video in this series. Bye.